Good afternoon. Good morning. This is Dave. I didn't realize we were starting, and I realized this is a professionalism class. So I was chewing gum and listening to music, which was probably unprofessional. And this is a professionalism class. So Dave, I'm the new dean at Kogod School. I'm delighted to be on video with you. I wish I could be there in person, but I'm on travel. So they asked me to give you a short recording uh, that you could listen to, and hopefully it's not too boring. Um, I also wish, in addition to being there with you, I wish I had this class when I was your age. When I was your age, I was in San Diego at school. I was dressing pretty much in surf shorts. I may have had an earring. I may have had very long hair. I may have had a ponytail when I was in graduate school. I may have experienced some of my, let's say, awkward years when I was in high school and college. And if I had a class and a professor and a school that taught me how to be more professional when I was your age, I would have benefited a lot. So part of it was my parents were not in business at all. So I didn't learn from them. Um, they didn't have a lot of friends that were in business. And so I never really got to observe or learn or soak in what it meant to go into business, to be in a business setting, to be professional. So let me give you a few tips that I've learned over the years, which I hope you might consider as you think about your professional uh, setting, your professional presence, and what you're gonna do when you both interview for internships, interview for jobs, and then start working. So a few things that are basic, dress appropriately to the setting. Um, I didn't always do this. When I was your age, I probably wore shorts that were below my knees because that's what we wore then. If there was a presentation in class, I probably didn't always dress professionally. So if, if you have a presentation in class and it's supposed to be a professional presentation, maybe don't wear pajamas. Maybe wear something professional. You don't have to wear a jacket or a button up shirt, but something that is professional. And when you have interviews, the same thing. You need to dress the part. If you're going to a party, if you're going to a basketball game, you can dress like a normal 18 year old. But if you're in a professional setting, if you're giving a professional presentation in class, if you're interviewing, dress the part. Second piece of advice. Do your research, look at the bios, look up the information on the people you're meeting with. You can learn something and you can always digest and absorb something about their career that you could learn. At my former firm, the CEO of the company always judged people they interviewed, not based on the answers to the questions he had, but rather he, asked, he judged them based on the questions they asked him. Because his basic view was, if I were 18 or 19 and I were meeting with a senior professional or senior business person, I'd have a lot of questions that I'd want to ask them. And therefore, people will judge you by whether you do your research, how well you do your research, and what type of questions you ask. Look up their bios. Look up their resumes. Figure out if you can make a connection and prepare a bunch of questions that you can ask the person you're inter you're, that's interviewing you or that you're interacting with. Third, learn how to speak in public. When I was your age, I couldn't speak in public. I was so nervous. I would fumble words. I was not good at it all. But I also didn't have the opportunity to practice. I didn't have the opportunity to learn. I didn't have professors that, like in this class, were willing to teach me. It just wasn't part of our curriculum. So like in sports or in music or in anything else, learning to speak publicly takes practice. It takes repetition. And it's much better to make mistakes and fumble in class or in a school setting than in an interview or in a job setting. Number four, be careful on social media. It lives forever. And companies and, and em, uh, employers that you may seek to work with at some point in the future will look at your social media. 
when I was your age, if social media was around, I probably would be unemployed. Um, but you all have a much higher burden because social media is present. It's part of everybody's lives. So be careful what you post. Think that whatever you post could last forever and it could affect your future. It could affect your career. It could affect the way people see you. Number five, you have a personal brand. Everybody does. It could be that you're really funny. It could be that you're very studious. It could be that you're a great athlete, or it could be some combination of all of those. Your personal brand, like your social media, lives with you forever, and it develops over time. So you can build your brand, you can project who you are, and that will uh, affect the way people receive you, people think of you, and that will impact your future, the opportunities you have. So think about how you're projecting your personal brand and what that means for you at college, but also what it means for you after college. So again, build your brand, be careful on social media, learn how to speak in public, do your research and dress appropriately. If you're on Zoom, you can wear pajamas, but if you're giving a presentation in class, or you're meeting with an employer, don't wear pajamas. So thanks so much for having me and I'll see you later.